Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm going to be talking about the latest that's going on in China. So um, this is based on a, um, a news broadcast that's focused on uh, trying to get some information that's out of China. Uh, a lot of the data that they show is like from clips, you know, from individuals that are in the area, you know, either at the crematoriums or uh, waiting in line in the long lines with their, with the hearse, um, in the hospital, uh, some doctors have been interviewed, some officials have been interviewed. So, you know, it's a combination of different clips. Um, and then near the end of the broadcast, they had an individual that recorded uh, his, his last speech to his son. So, and I published that already. So let's start with uh, the important part of this. Um, there's an official take and there's an unofficial take of this. So kind of the official CCP state TV um, spin. And then there's the, what the people on the ground are seeing, either the lay person or the doctor, right? So from the official take, they are stating that uh, what's going on in in China is Omicron and different variants of this, right? And we've talked about BA 5.2, BM7, and BF7. Now, uh, it starts with an upper, so this is the official take. It starts as an upper respiratory infection, which we know this, and that few, this is how they phrase it, few may get pneumonia. All right, so this is the current crisis that's going on in China. Few will get pneumonia, but yet you have all these dead bodies all over the place and ICUs are packed. Um, and that the ones that do get the pneumonia, the official spin on this is, is that it's related to a weakened immune system, other comorbidities or uh, auto, autoimmune status. That's how they phrased it. Um, and that it can go from mild to severe to pneumonia. That's how they phrased it. This is the, the sequel of, of the disease that they're seeing. Mild to severe to pneumonia, but few people would end up getting the pneumonia. And that is dealt with prompt treatment. So if you get prompt treatment, then the severity of the problem diminishes. We know that through what has been leaked out um, that they don't have any hospital beds. People are putting patients on the floor. They're running out of respirators. And um, they, the, the people that need to be cared for at the hospital setting. So, you know, you have like an ER setting and then you have an ICU setting, right? intensive care unit, those are packed and people still need care. So there are people that are dying in the hospital during the care. And there are people that are dying out of the hospital because they're not getting care. And some of the people that are dying in the hospital may be due to late care, late treatment. So as this is progressing, mild, to severe, they get into the hospital, it's already severe, and then their chances of getting pneumonia are increased, okay? So uh, treatment as part of the, um, the uh, you know, preventing a negative outcome is really important, catching this really early. I think we saw this sim a similar dynamic in India when they had their big wave and the whole healthcare system started to break down, right? So we, so there was an analog there in India 
um, they were out of oxygen and they didn't have an, enough staff and nurses and doctors were getting sick and all this. So the, the healthcare system broke down. Something, we saw something that was starting to crack um, in US uh, during the big waves where there were lots of ICU um, um, patients. So the capacity in the emergency care units, there wasn't any. So, you know, and that can affect outcomes, right? Now, um, then we'll transition to people that are experienced in this setting. All right, so the spin from the spin from the official narrative by by the state TV is partially true. They're not accentuating the severity of the pulmonary um, infection. This, this and I and it's important to understand that it is happening. It is happening in its severity. And that there's a key dynamic here that the official narrative is bringing up, that the experienced individuals that have been recorded have been uh, um, saying. They're seeing a lot of people that are getting reinfected, all right? <clears throat> and I think there's two ways to look at the reinfection. There, that there's the uh, had several positive COVID uh, tests and symptoms throughout the last three years. Okay, so let's say individuals caught COVID twice or whatever, okay? So they're, they're seeing more individuals getting it, you know, multiple times. Then there is, then there is this new thing that's happening in China where there is a latent phase. And if you have this latent phase activated, your chance of dying from it and having this white lung pneumonia kind of thing going on um, ends up being radically higher. Your risk factors are radically higher for this. All right. so. So we got to keep in mind that people in China are getting reinfected even if they had previous COVID. That means that the antibodies that they, remember I was saying we have to understand the antibodies, antibodies through inoculation, antibodies through natural infection. People are getting COVID multiple times in China. All right, that means that the inoculation isn't holding. And that means that their natural antibodies from these different variants that they're exposed to isn't holding. So whatever is floating around is immune. Um, it's uh, it's evading the immune system. All right, I have you know a few theories on why that is, but and I've already mentioned those theories, and I'll bring it up later, not in this video though. Um, so there's reinfections that are starting to take hold. Now, um, healthcare workers are being infected and reinfected. So you're having this, and they're still working too. So there's the stress of not only the population overrunning the healthcare system, but the actual healthcare workers are sick. And they're approximating in in these different units and ones that have worked in one of these ICU units would appreciate what I'm saying here. Um, each one of these facilities in China, four to 10 people per day are dying. Okay, so you're getting a code, right? Uh, you know, the person is expired 10 times a day in all the facilities in China, all right? That's minimum, all right? Now, um,
the cohort groups that are coming down with the severe infection and dying from this are 40 to 50 year olds. So they're in their for they're, they're in their 40s, they're in their 50s, and and you know, they classify elderly as 65, which is that, you know, but but you know, so it ranges from the 40s onward. Not so many younger people, but people in their 20s can get it. Um, um, but it's looking like the, the the higher death rates are in the 40s, the 50s, and the elderly. It's not just the elderly. Um, what is interesting is, is that the weird side effects of contracting COVID in this current crisis in China um, the rapid white hair at the root are in the younger population, the 20s, 30s. Okay, I think that this is an, an interesting data point. Exactly why is that? The swelling of the eye, the younger cohort group, um, the darkening around the eye, younger cohort group, the blistering of the skin, younger cohort group, the hairy black tongue, younger cohort group. Why? Why? So it's an interesting thing here. This is that there seems to be a younger group that's ending up seeing more um, external side effects or external manifestations of a disease, of a disease. Because is it COVID, some sort of COVID mix with something else? Is it part of an opportunistic infection that's tied to AIDS-like syndrome? Who knows, right at this moment in time, because the data is very opaque. Um, now, uh, if you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, 70s, then you're more moving more towards this white lung situation and expiring. Now, what happens, all right, independent of which cohort group you're in, you will normally have what they're seeing in China. So you'll normally have one to three days of fever and kind of and, and, and this malaise kind of thing going on in your body. You don't feel well, right? You don't have energy. Um, the ones that do fare much better, after the three days, the fever will abate and you'll start to get better. And it's usually around a 10 day kind of period where you start to feel more like yourself. There are groups of people within that that um, uh, may start to see this long COVID all right, situation where it's just kind of like, so they had a mild case and it just doesn't go away. Part of the reason is you don't clear it. It stays in certain tissue. Um, now there's another group, the group that it goes into the severe and the pneumonia category where you have the fever for three days, it goes away and it comes back two days later, three days later. And again, you have another th three day fever, right? And then it progresses and it becomes worse. If you remember back in 2019, there were individuals during the flu-like syndrome in the United States, where people were contracting a cold, they would have it, you know, somewhat bad for about a week. It would go away, and then about three days later, it would come back, and it was more of a respiratory problem. Those were probably this is that those were probably the that, that, that during that wave was most likely um, uh, SARS-CoV-2 without the D614G mutation. But there was, the point is, is that in the early days, there was a latent phase to this that ended up being much more lower respiratory that you couldn't clear. And it was kind of like habitual. And it took like two, three weeks to clear it. So you were sick for one week, that was upper respiratory, 
and then you were sick, you know, you had a little bit of a reprieve, a few days reprieve, and then it came right back. And it was much more lower respiratory. That's a similar dynamic that they're seeing in China right now for the ones that are getting the white lung. So you get the fever for three days, it abates, you feel a little bit better, and then, you know, let's say for 48 hours or whatever, and then bam, it hits you again. And then you have the high fever again, and then bam, you're, you're getting the pneumonia. Um, now the, the, uh, uh, so, you know, it kind of, it flares up, it flares up. And so there's like a latent phase to this. Now the, now the, one of the last recordings I did, I was talking about how it was estimated from one doctor's CT scanning of patients that 12 to 15% of the patients in his hospital, uh, he saw white lung. So let's say they had 100 beds in the hospital, all right? Um, that 12 to 15 of those 100 people had white lung, all right? Data is coming out out of is it Shanghai, Shanghai, where the hospitals in Shanghai are, are at about 20% white lung, all right? So it fits a little bit into what the original report was. The original report was only one hospital uh, and uh, it was early, earlier in this whole wave. So it's estimated around 20%, at least in Shanghai, where white lung is prevalent in the hospitalization cases. Now you gotta remember, there are an awful lot of people that are not in the hospital because they're overrun. The hospital is, is crashed. They can't, they don't have any more beds. They can't treat any more people. So the white lung situation is worse than 20%. So, all right, so, and this is the reason why they're expiring and you're starting to hear cases where people are starting to burn the bodies and getting fined burning the bodies, you know, outside of their home. Now, because of the overrunning of the hospitals, we saw this in the United States too, but because of the overrunning of the hospitals, the families get upset. You know, why can't you care, you know, for their family member without really understanding that there are no beds to put the person. There are no oxygen tanks to use. There are no respirators to use. It's all, someone has to get out of the hospital or die to free up a bed to allow these people to get, you know, to get care. This is a problem. This is a huge problem. And, I, and um, this is part, this is one of the reasons why the deaths are happening. It's not the only reason, um, but, the key here is, is that antibodies aren't holding and there are reinfections that are taking place. And there's a latent, there's a latent phase of between, you know, about 48 hours before the, the next wave of, of the pulmonary infection hits. Now, um, the thought here, the thought here is that there's, there's, um, in, in Hubei, so that Hubei province, which is Wuhan, right? And Beijing, the two major versions, oh, let me rephrase this. Look, if someone asked the question, why is this happening right now? The, the, the thought, the theory here, at least what's coming out of China, is, is that because of the zero COVID policy, there wasn't a lot of cross reaction between different variants like we had in the United States or in Europe, right? So, so the population didn't see, or wasn't exposed to kind of like these cross mutations that are taking place. You know, these cross mutations between two different versions of the virus should be a rare event. 
Um, they, but you, you could have them, or um, I think is more plausible is, is that things are tracking or mutating to different receptors, all right? But there are these mergers that are taking place, all right? Now, I think that certain mergers may be, have a hand by man and there's a hand by nature, right? So the thought process here is, is that because China did not have an open society during their zero COVID, they weren't exposed to these cross-reactive mutations between Delta and Omicron, like the United States had. So what is now happening is, is that they're getting that exposure with probably a lower titer level or an ineffective type, an ineffective antibody. And that Delta and Omicron in different combinations in Beijing or in Hubei province um, um, is the reason why this white lung is happening, all right? So the thought is, is that it's something to deal with Delta and this BF7, all right? So here again, we got BF7 popping up um, in, the, in the discussion of why white lung is happening. So that is an update of what's going on in China. And, uh, you know, what are some of the key takeaways from this? You're going to have, we're going to have China continue its policy of not stating the real numbers, the cases, the real deaths. Um, and more data will leak out, more videos will leak out. And we're going to start hearing more understanding about white lung and the prevalence of white lung. And it's probably higher than 20%. Um, it's probably understated because not everybody's getting care uh, in the hospitals because they're overrun. And the way that they count a case, it has to be respiratory, right? And all, and, or it's not COVID, right? Well, it's not true. I mean, you can have, you know, you can have cases that don't have, you know, a strong respiratory component to it. Um, so they're undercounting and age has to, age seems to have a, a component to this weight loss that it's not just the elderly, you know, some of the early reports was just the elderly, but they were probably at a very high risk already because of their age. And that's why they were hit first. Um, and that the external features, side effects of contracting whatever is going on in China, uh, around the eye, the blistering, the whitening of the hair, um, uh, you know, these kind of manifestations, the tongue, that is more of a younger cohort group. Why? That's, that's, I think that's, that, that might tell us something a little bit about what's going on. So. Hopefully this uh, helps you to understand what is happening. And, um, and uh, you know, the best way to, you know, go through this is just, just to stay informed and, and try to boost up your immune system the best you can, I've told you how. And um, so please go to my different channels. I have three channels on YouTube. Dr. Paul Cottrell, Paul Cottrell, you know, and uh, so there's three YouTube channels. All the links are in the description of all my videos. So click the link, subscribe. I have also a Brighteon, a Rumble, and a um, BitChute channel. Please subscribe to those. And I have a Patreon account where if you would like to help support my work, for a nominal fee, you can join 
my channel on Patreon. You can also support me by going to buy me a coffee. The link is in the description that helps support my work. I'm not monetized. I'm heavily censored on YouTube. There's certain things I just cannot say, um, unfortunately, but you'll be able to see some of those videos that go into more detail about um, the origins of this on Rumble, BitChute, and Brighton, and Patreon. Uh, you can go to my website, the-studio-rakevic.com, and you can donate on Stripe or PayPal to also help support my work. And if you've been following my videos, I tell you exactly what you do to help prepare yourself. And you can uh, get those items on the-studio-rakevic.com. Thank you for listening. Please use the links below and you will you will fare a lot better um, in understanding this crisis, where this is going, and uh, what you need to do to prepare. Thank you for listening and have a good night.